Hello and welcome to our third speaker series here in the Road to the UTMB. My name is Charlie Radcliffe and I am the Community Manager for Never Stop Chamonix. Today I'm joined by new Chamonix resident, South African trail runner and the North Face Global Team athlete, Meg McKenzie. Thank you. I would like to start with a post that you shared on your Instagram recently because it created uh, quite an amazing response and it really sort of starts and sets the scene of what we want to talk about today. So if you don't mind, you can read it. Great. So in my post I said, perhaps it's time we took a minute to stop and think more deeply about how and why we do what we do as athletes. Fun, for sure. Joy, yes. Learning and growth, certainly. Forming relationships and communities, absolutely and always yes. Unhealthy lifestyles and winning races at the cost of health, surely not. It seems of growing relevance that our sport is promoting or at least not aiding those in danger of falling into mental and physical health problems, image obsession and a skinny is better narrative. We need to change this trajectory so we can be the role models for future trail athletes. You don't need to sacrifice your mental and physical health to race well. You can be a strong, confident and powerful woman with hips and boobs and body fat and still crush it out there. Thank you. Sure. Let's, let's rewind and go back to the beginning for where this post came from in terms of your career. So let's go back to Meg 10 years ago when you first became a professional athlete. Right. So I started running a bit more seriously in my early 20s and I was running well and really enjoying it and um, I had a traumatic incident in life that caused me to lose my appetite for some time so I think what's really important here is that in my story is that that weight loss that came from the incident um, it ignited or it, it helped me to race really well I got really skinny, I got super light, um, I started winning a lot of races, I started getting sponsors, um, I got a lot of outside accolade, uh, accolades and affirmation and all those things, it just really aided that, that unhealthy behavior that could have possibly been fixed in a couple of months or I could have really rectified my health. Um, but instead I got into this really dangerous cycle in my health and running of chasing those achievements and accolades and keeping the weight off and yeah so that's really where where it all started which is an interesting place to start one's running career and what was the consequence i mean you, you we talk about the positives to your winning yeah. getting sponsors everyone's saying you look great but what there were consequences to this weren't there so there were major consequences to that i think the biggest consequence for my running career was injury. Um, I got a femoral neck stress fracture and that was followed up by two more metatarsal stress fractures in quite close proximity. So that was really just my body screaming at me that I didn't have the energy availability to keep doing what I was doing, but I did. And that, that, that cycle of injury really caused me to miss out on a lot of performances where I could have possibly reached a higher potential and I had to miss out on, I remember particularly one world championship race and countless other races that looking back now really makes me quite sad to think that I had to miss out on those. And then I think some other consequences that, that I experienced was the mental health side of things. You know, when you're chasing those outside accolades all the time and trying so hard to control your weight and your racing and you're holding so tight to the sponsors and and if that's how you started then it was really difficult for me to let go of anything and so mentally it was a huge challenge and struggle and sometimes still is. Um, was there a moment what when you because now you're in you know, a great place in yes. mentally physically was there a moment what was the moment for you where you started to, to realize that change was necessary? I think it was, I'm not sure if it was a particular moment, but it was probably that third stress fracture. 
that really opened my eyes and made me realize that this couldn't continue, that something needed to change. I couldn't carry on in this really unhealthy cycle. I think I also forgot to mention that I'd lost my menstrual cycle. So I really was in a very unhealthy space. My body was not cooperating and I wanted more. I wanted to be healthy and I wanted to be strong. Um, so yeah, I think it was, it was that third injury that really propelled me to change. And what was that? I mean, so how you're in an environment, a community, a space where it's self-perpetuating. Uh, how, how did you break free? What, what was your strategy and how did you address the problems? It took some time. So I think even though I had such a good support network of super close friends and family around me, um, I pushed anyone away that was trying to help me at the time. Anyone who pointed out that I might be too skinny, I pushed away until I didn't have to listen to them anymore. And I was just so firm in what I was chasing. So, but I think some of the changes that did happen was number one, I got a new coach and he has played an, an absolutely pivotal role in my life since then. He's transformed everything about my life and my running career. So that was a big one. Um, and then I, I guess through my coach, he has encouraged me to really concentrate on fueling enough and fueling, consciously fueling always. So never slipping back into that, any, any like state of underweight or unhealthy behavior. How does he do that? You, you told me earlier some, like, how, how is he writing a diet plan? Is what's... <laughs> so he writes in my training log, kind of, he'll give me a workout or an easy run. And then on some days he'll say pizza, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, or burger. Um, he checks up, how's the eating going? Um, and I think what's really fundamental though is aside from those things that he does, he's instilled this self-love in me that I now know that I'm enough as I am, thanks to him. I don't need the sponsors. I don't need the outside achievement or other people to think I'm great at running or the race results. To be happy, I'm, I'm happy in myself because I'm enough. And that self-love and that acceptance that he's instilled in me is, I think, the most important change that's really come about. And that's really addressed the core issue. And you said that when people were telling you things you didn't want to hear, you pushed them away. Yeah. Now, the other side, I mean, I see you're new here and you're, you're, you're making loads of friends. I see who you're out running with and you're, you're with a great community of, of women who are just amazing role models. I mean, yeah. yeah. And super strong. Very, very strong. So tell me about that. That's the, you've got your coach on one side, then, then the wider, still small, but wider community. What's, how does that work for you? How does that support you? What's, what's that narrative? Yeah, so I think you're right. I've got a wonderful community of women, both here in Chamonix and like the larger Turin and community. So many friends in different parts of the world. And we all, I guess we all keep each other in check. Um, we've all spoken very openly about these kinds of things and a lot of us have experienced very similar if not the exact same issues in the past so we all know what it feels like and we all know how important it is to to keep healthy um, and we all know how easy it is to fall into those traps it can happen so quickly so yeah I guess we're at the stage now with my my core group where we we keep it lighthearted, we keep it fun. Um, I have one friend in particular who sent me a message the other day saying, thank goodness we don't have a thigh gap, otherwise we would lose our phone in the toilet. So <laughs> like fun, like we just keep it, keep each other in check and, and remembering why we do the sport also. Mm -hmm. That's a really important one. So we have fun and we experience so much joy in the mountains together. And we can only do that with a very healthy, strong body. We're not going to be out there if we have femoral neck stress fractures and things like that. So, I mean, as you said, 10 years of, of racing at an elite level, um, you're a role model to many people. And they can learn from you and, and, and take your lessons away from you. But what, if you could go back to your 22-year-old self, would she have listened? No. 
<laughs> probably not. So that indicates that something needs to change, right? Because there's a reason that I wasn't listening. And I think that trying to help in the way that people helped back then didn't work. And so why should it help now? But we need to change the conversation and the narrative around this. And I think that's why it's so important. And I think being more open about this particular subject is super important. Mm -hmm. It needs to be something that is more easily spoken about. And there's a lot that needs to change. <laughs> In terms of uh, where these, uh, who controls the narrative in terms of skinny is better and, and, and that is, it's obviously a, a bit of a cliche that social media, which, you know, is much more on social media, so that will have an impact. But where do you feel, you know, there's you as, a, as an individual role model, but is there, who else could be a role model in terms of is it organisations? Is it sponsors? Is it a brands? Is it grassroots trail community running communities like yeah I think everyone that you mentioned I think it's coaches play a huge role mm -hmm. I think they can really change an athlete's life and I think role models can play an, an enormous role so when I entered the sport I had the likes of like Emily Forsberg and Anna Frost and that really helped in my getting to where I am now so I think that we need more role models who are going to perpetuate a positive, healthy, strong, confident narrative. Um, and then I think that athlete managers also play an enormous role. They can really help to maybe pull an athlete back if she is over racing um, or under eating or both. They often go hand in hand. And sponsors also really, um, I mean, there's an example of Ali Ostrander who recently booked herself into a clinic for eating disorder. She's an American um, steeple athlete and it was her sponsor who really uh, helped her make that decision and essentially, yeah, helped her go through that process. So I think sponsors and then federations and organizations for sure. They, I'm not exactly sure how because I don't do that, mm -hmm. but I do know that they carry clout and I know that they can assist change in this for sure and i guess what where would you see what would you want if you were to sum up what would the narrative be like what, what would you like like what yeah what would you like people to take away from this like what from your post and you said you got you got a huge amount of interaction and uh comments and then it, it's hard when social media is all about likes and comments mm -hmm. but it, it did really trigger a, a, a conversation mm -hmm. and there was a lot of support and a lot of people being like who've been through the same things like how how do you see this moving forward how do you how would you well how do you see it moving forward one and how do you actually want it to move forward because it mm -hmm. can often be two different things yeah I think that I would like to see it move forward in such a way that yes all of the things I just said people step up take responsibility really take this seriously and then in a more kind of um, ephemeral way, I guess, is, is I would love for everyone to feel more joy and self-acceptance and less pressure um, and to realize that, that, yes, of course, competition is what well, can be people's livelihoods, but essentially health and, and mental health come first and that should never be neglected that, yeah, I think joy, love, and self-acceptance are the three things that I would really <laughs> love for the narrative to swerve towards. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think another thing there is, is, in a perfect world, I would love for women to stop fighting their bodies from the time that mm -hmm. they start doing whatever they do. We're so conditioned to fight and to be leaner and skinnier and the narrative could switch to acceptance of what we have. And that is more body fat than men. That's just how we are and that's fine. And that should be celebrated and loved rather than fought and struggled against. Mm. So, I mean, we, everyone's different. 
shapes, sizes, um, body fat percentages, muscle mass, bone structure. Totally. And to be prescriptive is to tell people they need to have a certain meet a certain metric is, is, is never going to work. So what, what could we do? What is, how do we get to the point where we support people in Ooh. the right way? Well, I think that this could really be something that the a community of women really take on and take responsibility for. Um, not neglecting men, you're welcome to help us too. But I think that women who've been through it especially can spot the signs. So it does that they don't need be any metrics. Like we can see it a mile away. We can see what's happening. I mean, loss of menstrual cycle and injury are just two of the really obvious signs. Um, and there are others, but I think that maybe it's going to take a really strong group of women or body of women to step up to the plate and start mentoring and helping and spotting this before it becomes an issue or before it gets too far down the line for the athlete. Because I think that, yeah, in my case, I was lucky enough to, to stop it before it became anything too serious. Like I said, I still get sad thinking back, but other athletes have had it worse and other athletes have had career ending injuries or major health crises like burnout, um, maybe an inability to have a family down the road. There are lots of things that, that athletes have given up for this, for what? For for a couple of race wins, it doesn't seem worth it. Mm. So I think that, yeah, we could we can make change. We just need to take responsibility. Which begins by talking about it, isn't it? Exactly. Like removing the stigma and having it as something that's acceptable to... Yes. ...to confess to. Yeah, so taking away the stigma of it being something that you've done wrong, I think mm -hmm. is super important. Mm -hmm. Just because you've fallen into the trap, it doesn't mean that you are a bad person or you've done something wrong or you've made a mistake. It's a very normal thing to happen. So I think taking away that like blame and shame and just making it, hey, don't worry, I mean, I've been there. Let's, let's help each other out, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being more open and, and spreading that openness to every corner of the community from, as you said, from grassroots training groups to like big sponsors and federations. If everybody steps up, something's going to change. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's a huge amount to think about with this, isn't there? So much to self-reflection, to chew on, <laughs> exactly. Uh, self-reflection for all of us personally, but as a community about what, how we can support each other in this. Um, but I want to say thank you very much because it's really brave to come thank and talk you. about these things, um, to, to put yourself out there to judgment, to everything. So thank you for that. And That's a pleasure. it's always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much. And thank you for the wonderful questions. <laughs> and thank you for joining us live today. We will be back next week when finally we have the UTMB in town. And we'll be joined for our fourth and final speaker series with Pau Capel, who is going to be talking about all of his uh, amazing achievements of uh, winning the UTMB in 2019, breaking 20, and so much more. We will also be having a number of runs with our athletes, including Meg, yeah. and uh, the global team from the US, uh, from Spain, from all over the world. And so join us, and you can find everything on thenorthface.com. So thank you, and see you soon.